So great, you've installed the application in environment. Now you want to run the application and start playing around with the code. So let's do that. So great, you've got your application here. Now you may wonder why the node modules are up there and why there's a package lock file in my folder. Well, if you remember installing Angular, you install the Angular locally. Now you can pass in the command dash G, which will install it globally in your environment. The difference is npm install dash G for global at Angular dash CLI at latest. So that will install it globally and you won't see the node modules in that folder above. So what's next? You're in your root folder and you will navigate into your application folder. So what you do is cd, the name of your application, and that will navigate into your application. Now if you do ls-la, you would see the directories or you see the folders in your terminal. Now this is on Mac, on Windows you just do dir, dir. Now it's important that you run your command lines inside of your Angular application. I would say it's not part of an Angular project. How do you run it? So the next command you do is npm run. So what's npm? So what's a package JSON file? It's a file that's basically referencing all the dependencies you need to run your application. Now there's two types of dependencies, dependencies and dev dependencies. So dev dependencies are dependencies that you use in your local environments. So like tooling, compiling, anything that you need to use in your local environment. But when it's compiled, you only use dependencies that are for production, which I'll reference here above. These dependencies actually get pulled in together with the bundle and get shipped, deployed into your cloud. Okay, so we understand a package JSON file. Now, which command should I run to run the application? Well, the command you're interested in is actually npm run start. So I'm going to enlarge a little bit the font for you. So I'm going to enlarge a little bit the font for you so you can see it in terminal what's happening. What's happening right now, it's compiling the app and preparing to serve basically virtually or locally on your environment, the application. Now, it takes a couple of seconds to compile, as you can see here, and it gives you a URL. This is the URL where you can access your website locally. No one else can access it through this URL. Your browser, pasting the URL, and you should load the application. Now, I'm amazed what Angular has done in version 9. It's a better landing page that they've installed. It's giving you references to the links. It's giving you references to the knowledge. You have everything installed, and it's a, quite, it's, it's a nice quick shortcut that they've provided. Now, there you go. This is your Angular application running. This is the app that has been installed onto your local machine. Now, how do you debug Angular? Well, debugging, there's different ways. One thing you need to do is right-click Inspect Element, and let's have a look at what's actually produced. Well, this is the HTML. Now, this is the HTML that's loading. You may see a couple of scripts below. You can see a runtime, polyfill, styles, vendor, and main.js. You may be wondering what are these scripts, and we'll go in detail in other lectures, but I can tell you a little bit right now that it's all part of the Angular package, and polyfill is basically a script that making sure that your application runs in different types of browsers. So what's next? So we can go into our console, and the way you can actually debug your stuff is basically you can find the file in the console and then create a breaking point. That is actually my, one of my favorite ways of debugging. So what you do is basically click Command P, and that will come up with search. And I know already based on my head that one of the components that Angular creates is called app.component.ts. And there is your TypeScript file. You can basically create, you can basically add the breaking point like this, and then run the application, you can test it in that, and it will stop at exactly that spot. Now, why do you see TypeScript here? Now, you see TypeScript here because when you're running in dev environment, it actually creates a source file between a TypeScript and a JavaScript that's compiled. But when you deploy it, you won't see the TypeScript because it's going to be compiled, JavaScript, and minified. You won't have the source file of TypeScript. Another way of debugging your Angular code is, of course, the same for JavaScript, but in consoles, but I prefer more to debug it this way, and it keeps your code cleaner. Especially when you're doing git commits, you're not accidentally submitting a console log in your production code. Okay, enough of the debugging. We'll be debugging through the whole session. Let's move on to see what Angular should generate for us and how actually the files are structured.